welcome to the interview yeah that's, and that's uh, just so you know that this interview might be recorded and posted on youtube and other social media channels yeah, yeah. so uh, welcome to the interview and uh, why don't you start up with your experiences and uh, what you're targeting yeah, so at? i have worked on a uh, uh, multiple number of uh, devops tools like uh, container services docker or on container orchestration deployment tool like kubernetes and configuration management tool like ansible and uh, pipeline Jenkins. And also, I also am having of um, the experience on uh, AWS services like uh, services, storage services, database services. So these are all services I have worked so far. And uh, how much total experience that you have? Yeah, 10 years. You have 10 years of experience and uh, how yeah, much in yeah. DevOps? Yeah, five years. And you work for five years. I can see yeah, that yeah. you have worked on some of the large enterprises across. So, and uh, your role has been mentioned as a system administrator and then DevOps engineer and AWS yeah. DevOps engineer. Can you highlight on the what are the what were the your roles and responsibilities? Yeah, right. So, uh, um, myself, we are working on multiple number of uh, projects actually. So, one is one project we have uh, started from the scratch. So, we have uh, we are already there is a physical infra existing physical infra is there. So we are migrating into the cloud by using the Terraform. So there we have started a, it's the process going on the infrastructure building and the other thing already the infrastructure was completely migrated into the uh, cloud actually. So we are uh, creating a pipelines to change to update the versions and to update the deployment versions. So so there are whatever the changes we are going to do in the project we are going to make it uh, through the we are going to make it a pipeline. And we are maintaining multiple number of clusters for each and every individual branch. So in you know, the branching strategy, what you're following. So except, except of the feature branch, for remaining branches, we are maintaining clusters. So whatever the modifications and uh, things what we are making, what we are going to make it in the application. So we are may, we are going to trigger a pipeline. So we are going to grab the image update tag number. So we are going to make the update in the deployment cluster. So these are the regular things we are going to make it. Okay. And can you tell me what 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 is the team size that you're working in? Yeah, um, uh, we are having um, we are working on total three number of uh, projects. So we are having projects uh, in our organization. So my team uh, size of uh, six members. So so in that uh, we are daily on daily basis we are going to make it up for uh, the resource allocation and uh, giving access for the people into the cluster. So creating a number of resources which are required for the developers and test for it and creating a separate testing environment. So these are all those things we are going to make it on a regular basis. So now you mentioned infrastructure as code and you worked on Terraform. Can you yeah. tell me a specific scenario where you utilized Terraform for creating infrastructure and how did you contribute to the reliability and scalability? Yeah, right. So whenever we are migrating into the infrastructure first of all our basic thing when uh, when you are uh, writing it from the scratch we will start with vpc or private submits anyway we are making that application or service we are going to run on the private submit so because of uh, that uh, what we are going to do means we are making an uh, one game in uh, one other server in public submit we are making uh, rest of the applications where the server is where the where where, where we are going to post an application that servers we are going to make it on the private subnet. So this is the regular strategy we are going to follow. And anyway, we are making that private subnet to be available with the load balancer. Anyway, we are running that load balancer in the public subnet. So in that way, we are making our application much more secure from the day one onwards. So later on, we are going to launch and configuration further. So by making an auto scaling group. So based on the requirement and the topic. So first we, we are going to start it from the auto scaling group. Then we will make, we are making that instances to be available on the private sub, and I am going to access. I am going to configure that instances with uh, another server, which is not, uh, uh, which we are not making to be available on the uh, application. So that server we are making that uh, the uh, tam, tam file in that uh, server, and we are going to communicate with other servers which are in private subnet. I am going to configure other servers which are there in private subnet with this gaming uh, server. So in this way, we are going to start the the basic uh, the platform for the infrastructure. Okay, and how comfortable are you writing the Terraform scripts yourself? Yeah, right. Um, so basic starting from the routing tables and associations. Of course, I was much more. I have written many number of scripts uh, for the Terraform. 
So you know, you can, I can, I can rate myself out of five, uh, four star rating for the out of five. writing terraforms and uh, i see that you have also worked on ci cd uh, and you have used jenkins yeah yeah of course uh, we okay. are using jenkins pipeline can you can you tell me a scenario where you had to optimize a jenkins pipeline for a complex application and what strategies did you use yeah right so previously uh, for any other applications previously we are going to start it from the triggering of uh, 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 We took the tops for deployment, and uh, we are using sir like the uh, green platform. We are going to make it from the GitHub. So from that, we are going to if whatever the changes we are going to do it for the uh, branching environment. So from that, uh, our branching strategy will start, and from we are going to make that to be available in Jenkins pipeline. So from there, going to be included and other things, static uh, coding, testing, uh, static analysis, supporting these are all those things. And later on, uh, we are going to. Uh, check with the dependencies. Check. So in this way, we are maintaining the separate uh, repositories for integration and deployment. So whatever changes we are going to identify in that. So yeah. so recently we have updated with an automation tool like uh, Argo CD. So this Argo CD, what it will when I am going to make this operator as an Kubernetes, this operator will identify that whatever the changes we are doing in the repository. So immediately it it will identify the change from the integration repositories. Then it will update the same changes in the deployment. So for example, whatever the changes we have done, it anyway we are going to make it through the environment available with any stack. So the same image stack I am going to update with in the deployment ML file, so that automatically whatever the changes we are making in the code coming uh, committing into the integration repository, I am going to grab that through the I am going to get it from the image stack through an environment available. I am going to tag and Docker image with that image stack. And I'm going to make the deployment. So in this way, we have automated the process. So whatever changes we are making, we are make, we are converting into the. Of course, we are making the same changes in the deployment as well. Okay. And can you tell me something about uh, any DevSecOps integration that you've done? Yeah, yeah. So uh, actually, um, previously, what we have said about uh, security things. So we are making and dependency checks. We are involving in the pipeline. So as well, uh, some static code analysis also we are doing through the Sonar Cube, and as well as we are making image scanning with the uh, Trivi uh, tool, we are making the image scanning and we are saving the reports as well. And along with that, um, there are multiple number of uh, things we are going to involve. Like um, for example, um, uh, if there is a in the deployment cluster itself, I can make CubeSec. So there is a tool called CubeSec which is going to uh, scan the entire cluster. So it will is going it is going to scanning the root folder of the cluster. So like that, uh, there are many available options we can make to much to add much more security things. But anyway, our cluster is much more secure. Why? Because so we are more focused on the role based authentication. So we are uh, we are giving more importance for authentications and authorizations. So people who are going having the access in the cluster, we are going to decide the roles for them and going to make a role binding for them. So in this way, I'm going to add much more. Security for the cluster, and as well uh, along with that, I am also making uh, much more things to be available, like uh, making secrets. So if you are migrating into the cloud, I can make that secrets to be available in AWS Secret Management. This is again regarding the security. So if I give you a three-tier application, so which is which contains your web layer, okay. uh, your logic layer, and your database layer, can you tell me okay. uh, the few important aspects of security that uh, that you will put in? So as to make your application a very secure. Yeah, actually, um, of course, if you are migrate, if you are hosting that application in AWS itself, there are many security things, security services are available in AWS like uh, Gatekeeper or uh, Security Inspector, or uh, anyway, we are having CloudWatch, Cloud Metrics, uh, Cloud uh, Metrics, and as well as. Uh, Um, if you are making and triggering tool from the security alert 